My name is Elliot Black. I'm a private investigator from South Georgia. This is my show, Weird Out Here. I'm documenting my cases because if you're like me, you enjoy the weird. And let me tell y'all, it's weird out here. So, here you go. First episode. What follows is a collection of recordings from both home and the field. Some from during the case and some from after. I slap them all together in a way I hope makes sense. Welcome to Weird Out Here. Got an email from a young couple in a nearby town. Their son is missing and they want me to look for him. They say that there are very bizarre things involved in the disappearance. We'll see. I'm heading over there now. It's about a 20-minute drive. Oh, man. (laughs) So unless these folks are crazy, I'm off to a damn good start. A weird good start. So they're white folks from California, early 30s, Ivan and Sarah Vickery. Their son, Wallace, apparently didn't come home from school the day before yesterday, which fucking happens. But when the cops got involved, it seems nobody, nobody can remember this kid except for the parents. Like, nobody at the school, no neighbors, nothing. I'm standing out in their front yard now, near the road, and they've got neighbors on either side, maybe 40 yards away on one side and 80 on the other. Still close enough to see the kid if he played outside, and the parents say they've lived here for 10 months now, but their neighbors claim they've never seen the kid. Fucking weird, right? The couple claim they have no living relatives, but I'll check, obviously. For now, I'm headed to the kid's school. So nobody remembers this kid. I mean, not a single person I've talked to can remember him. And that includes the main desk secretary, the vice principal, the entirety of the janitorial staff, and three random teachers I caught in the halls. One guy in janitorial was particularly amusing. Goddamn Illuminati, man. How the hell are you going to make a little boy disappear? Shit, how you gonna make folks think they had a little boy when they didn't? I don't know, man. Shit's fucked up. Now you got Trump in the mix? Hell no. How indeed. I hung around for a while, and eventually I got a chance to sit down with the principal of the school, Judy McCall. She was kind enough to let me record our conversation, and for me, it marked the beginning of just how heavy this thing really was. So far, I had treated it with the same cool detachment I always try to have when I'm working, but... Man, this woman shook me. I realized at this point that the parents definitely weren't crazy, that there was something going on here, and that they weren't the only ones who were terrified by what was happening. I've been over it a million damn times. I don't know Wallace Vickery. I can't remember his face. Nothing. And it's right there. It just doesn't make sense. How can something like that be possible? I don't know. Have you talked to anyone else about this? Not many. Most of us aren't talking about it. It's... It's creepy, I guess. He's there in the yearbook. He's in the system. We have a copy of his birth certificate. But nobody can remember him. What does that mean? I don't know. I wish I did. That poor fucking lady was scared shitless. She was smart. And she saw more than she wanted to say out loud. 
she was scared, and she was starting to scare me. I went to see the bus driver, and he says he doesn't remember the kid. And after I showed him a photo of the house and told him where it was, he says he doesn't remember ever stopping at the house. He says the cops asked him about the boy, and he told him the same. Older black dude. He didn't seem much interested in getting involved, especially with me. I don't blame him. Cops had already bothered him about it. Poor dude probably thinks he'll be the main suspect in a murder case soon. Again, I don't blame him. I drove past the Vickery's place again and saw some kids playing in the yard next door, so I pulled in and asked the kids if they knew Wallace. They didn't. I went up to the house and asked the parents, and they didn't know him either. Had never seen him. I went back to the school and got the phone numbers for all the kids in Wallace's class. After calling all the houses, I got three families to agree to talk to me. None on record, but still. Well, I didn't get anything out of the folks that I talked to, but in one house, <laughs> there was a little girl in there, a couple of years older than Wallace Vickery. She was drawing with some colored pencils, and uh, strangely enough, she was drawing William Wallace from Braveheart, the Mel Gibson movie. He was standing on a huge, gnarly-shaped rock with the blue face paint holding a big sword. The little girl told me she loved Braveheart and Brave, the Pixar thing or whatever. I came home after that and did some Google foo on the names Wallace and Vickery. Internet told me that Wallace is possibly an English term for foreigner, particularly a Welsh-speaking foreigner, and that the term may first have been used to refer to William Wallace. Vickery probably comes from a title meaning one who works for the vicar. A vicar is a preacher, for those of you who might not know. I called the Vickeries and asked them what they knew about their name, and they told me they think it's Polish. Other than that, they didn't know much. I broke out a bottle of Polish vodka I happened to have and had a couple of drinks while I surrounded myself with anything and everything I could associate with Wallace Vickery. Photos, copies of his records from the school, some grass I pulled from the Vickery's yard earlier, other stuff. I tried to remember the smell of his house as best as I could. The smell of the kid's room. I sat down in the middle of all this stuff and smoked a bong load of salvia and some other shit that's a trade secret. I don't know if you've ever ripped salvia hard, my friends, but for those of you that don't know, that shit will take you to another place. Like, you literally leave this world for a minute. I saw an ocean of multicolored strings, or strands. It stretched out as far as I could see in every direction, and I was flying above it, not very high above the surface, like maybe a hundred feet. The strands of color that made up the ocean were all running in the same direction, but I couldn't tell you which. There was no sun in the sky, but there was bright light everywhere, kind of reddish light like sunset, but angry, like feverish. There was a pirate ship sailing on the multicolored string ocean, and standing on the deck at the wheel, I could see Wallace Vickery. He looked hard and terrifying. His eyes were black. I heard a sound like an earthquake, and underneath the ship, in the string ocean, I could see a shape, huge and glaring. It was an eye. It didn't look like an eye. It was like a negative space with a mound of glowing blue meat in the middle. But it was an eye, and it was huge, and it was looking right at me. I snapped out of the vision with the sense that the eye was still with me, still glaring at me from just beyond the walls of my little house. I could feel it outside my yard, feel it inspecting me, sizing me up. It was out there. I gathered up my chain, pinnacle, crown, and dagger, took another shot of the Polish vodka, and stepped outside to either throw down or get fucking destroyed. And it was gone. I'd like to think I scared it off, but I know better. I'd like to say I wasn't afraid, but I was. Well, I woke up with the fucking GBI knocking on my door this morning. They shook me down for what I know about Wallace and his parents, which is probably about the same as what they know, jack shit. The fat fuckers said they were keeping a close eye on the parents and implied I was under watch as well, of course. No more and less than I expect from cops. After breakfast, I got a call from Ivan Vickery. He said he found something real strange in their yard, near where Wallace plays. A rock with markings on it. I asked him if he touched it, and he said no. So I told him to sit tight until I could get over there. It was a big rock, 
irregular, not shaped or worked or anything, but it had carvings all over it. Nothing I recognized. The carvings were impossible, like the rock was made out of wet clay and the symbols were pressed into it before the whole thing hardened. But it was clearly not clay. It was dark gray with a flat sheen to it like shale. The grass around it didn't cast any shadows on it, which made it look like hard contrasted to the yard, like poorly photoshopped. It was wrong. Just looking at it made me feel bad, sick to my stomach, headache coming off. I looked at Ivan Vickery, but he was staring off into the distance. I asked him if Wallace played here often, and he gave me the weirdest fucking look. Like for a second, he didn't even know what I was talking about. But then he said, yeah, he played here a lot. I wrapped up the big rock in a hoodie and hauled it to my truck. The thing must have weighed 70 pounds. I was careful not to touch it with my bare skin. It wasn't anchored into the ground much, so it couldn't have been there long. And Ivan said he had never seen it before. Just before I set it down in the back of my truck, it squirmed underneath the hoodie, and I dropped it. When it hit the bed of my truck, it sounded wet and squishy. Ivan was right there, and he didn't seem to notice, but he did ask me what I thought the thing was. He looked afraid. He looked tired. I told him I didn't know what the thing was. I pulled out onto the highway from the vicary's place and realized I didn't know what to do with the thing. I damn sure wasn't going to bring it back to my house. I pulled into a church parking lot to figure out what to do, and then the gods did me a favor. I hit record as the pigs pulled up next to me in their unmarked Ford, the GBI clowns from that morning. Something I can help you with, fellas? What you got in the back of the truck? Well, goddamn, you could have watched your fat asses over here and seen it for yourself since you were watching. No need for all that back talk, son. I ain't your son, and I'll talk however I goddamn well please. Now, if you want it, take it. Don't expect me to fucking help. The fatter one stood there with his hand on his gun, watching me, while the other one strained his ass off getting the rock from my truck and into the trunk of their Ford. He looked like shit by the time he sat back down in the car and pulled away, sweating and pale. I waited until they were gone, then I scooped the hoodie up with a stick and burned it in the church parking lot. Burned the stick, too. I was standing there with it getting dark, hoping nobody happened by and saw me and thought I was fucking vandalizing the place or something. And the front door of the church opened up and somebody stepped out. A big dude. The preacher. The vicar. My tape recorder was still running. Hey, I... Uh... I had something I needed to destroy immediately and here. I, I'm Elliot Black, my private investigator. Well, all right, Mr. Black. I don't appreciate you making a mess in my parking lot. No, sir, I'm sure you don't. Like I said, it was an emergency. It's kind of hard to explain. Shit happens, I suppose. It really does. I'm Reverend Annette. Annette? Roland Annette. Gotcha. I'm really sorry about the mess, Reverend. I'm... Don't worry about it, son. What you got going on? I'm looking for a missing kid. From up the road? Yeah, do you know him? No. I heard about it, though. What do you think happened? I don't know. I know I believe those people when they say they have a son. I believe the photos and the records of the damn kid I've seen. Can't tell you what happened to him, though. Not yet. Is it true that nobody remembers the kid? Well, you don't remember him. We're, what, a mile, mile and a half from the kid's house? Do you know the neighbor's kids? Not by name, but I've seen them, spoken to them. Right, but not the Vickery's. The Vickery's, that's right. What do you think really happens to us when we're gone? <laughs> I think you probably know what I believe happens to us when we die. No, seriously. On a practical level, what happens? We're gone, right? We don't communicate with anybody from the other side. We become memory. Stories told and remembered. <laughs> sure, sure, I guess. And what if somebody got erased? Story removed? Edited out? All stories end. What's a story without an ending? Holy shit, preacher man, that's heavy. Is it now? All stories end, yeah, but this is something else. This is like being erased. Removed. Whoa! You see that? Right here, the reverend was pointing up at something that went by overhead. I just caught a glimpse of it. It was maybe a hundred feet in the air, headed over the trees behind the church. It was like a black hole in the sky, with a big blue glow in the center. 
I got the hell out of there after saying goodbye to Reverend Annette. When I got home, it felt like somebody had been here before me, like an intruder. Couldn't tell you if it was the cops or the thing with the eye. Not sure I want to know. My shit wasn't tossed or anything, so if it was the cops, they at least did a decent job looking around. I burned one and tried to give the big picture a good look. The drawing of William Wallace came to mind. Wallace was standing on a big lumpy rock. William Wallace was standing on a big rock. What the hell did I walk into? I got antsy around the house, just turning stuff over. I made it worse by making some coffee and knocking back too much of it. I went over to the Vickery's place. They still won't talk on record, but they were willing to talk. They were tired and sad. Fuck, it was hard just being around them. I think the phrase, I can't imagine, is for weak-minded people. I like to think I can imagine anything. But I really don't think I can imagine what the Vickery's are going through. I don't have kids and never will. Not interested. I know I can at least conjure up some of what they must be feeling, but I know that it isn't the real thing. I saw the real thing on their faces, and it's fucking ugly. Goddamn awful. That shit has destroyed them. They look ten years older than when I first saw them a day ago. Their whole house felt sad, oppressively so. There was a weight to the air in there, and it felt like there wasn't quite enough oxygen in the place. They didn't seem to notice. Ivan was mostly silent during our brief talk. Sarah did the talking. We watched a few videos of Wallace. He sounds like a lot older kid. He's articulate, smart as hell. I asked them about the rock. Found out they both touched it before they called me. I don't think that's good. I didn't tell them that. I asked them if Wallace was in a Braveheart. They said they were pretty sure he had never seen it. I asked him if he was into pirates or sailing, and they said no. They told me they thought the whole thing was a conspiracy, that the locals had to be covering something up. There's just no way that everybody who knew Wallace could forget him. I told them that I was looking into every possible angle and that I would pursue whatever leads I found. I told them I wouldn't forget Wallace. At this point, Ivan started crying. Sarah thanked me and offered me more money. I declined the offer. Ivan was still crying when I left. I drove by Shelley's house. Shelley's an old friend. I guess my only friend. We've known each other since high school. She puts up with most of my shit. Yeah, so I'm just going to put this thing on the coffee table and let it run while we talk, all right? It's fucking weird, man. What do you want me to say? It's part of the story, you know. I got to put it in there. Are you going to change my name? Nah. The fuck? <laughs> Nobody cares. Nobody that knows you will ever fucking listen to this shit. Come on. Oh my god. All right. Jeebus. Well, what's up? I just wanted to run some of this by you. Like, help me make sense out of some of it, all right? All right, well, like I said, I don't know him or anything, but I'll ask around. Well, what do you think about the eye thing? I think you were fucking high. Come on. All right. What? It's a monster that eats the memory of a person? That don't make no kind of sense. Nah, it's not... I don't know. Wallace was there with it. The thing wasn't... I don't know. I don't think it was eating him or anything. And it would have to take the memories out of everybody else's heads. It... Nah, it doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. But, uh, the stuff rarely does. You really do. Great. What about the rock? Is it the rock, or is the rock like it's bait, like the box from Hellraiser, or what? Holy shit. I don't know. I feel like I know less now than I did before I came over here. Good. I didn't want to hear any of your bullshit anyway. And I swear to God, if that thing comes to my house, I will kill you. It's not going to come over here. And I'm out of here. See you soon, lady. Aw, oh, hell nah. I swear... I see some crazy shit, Elliot. You won't. Don't worry about it. I left Shelley's, and I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous about stopping by and feeling more than a little fucking stupid. I was lying when I told Shelley I was sure it wouldn't come over there. Stupid. I needed to get some sleep and come at this thing with a fresh head. 
Well, a motherfucker is not getting any sleep tonight. It's 3.47 a.m. Just woke up scared shitless. It was outside my house again. I woke up because I could hear this huge churning sound, like it was raining sand on my house. I said a few words, got my shit together, and went outside, and the noise stopped. The only thing outside my house was the black Ford, the one the GBI assholes were driving. The trunk was standing open. I looked all over my immediate yard and didn't see anybody, no sign of the cops. My property's big, though, and remote, a lot of woods. I didn't go far in the dark. Now I'm sitting here with the 12 gauge at the ready, waiting for the sun to come up. It's almost 8 o'clock. I talked to Shelly. She's fine. No blue meat eye monster problems over there. I've looked all over my property and didn't find the cops. Or the rock. I have to do a more thorough search for the rock, though, and I will. But for now, I have to deal with the fucking GBI. So, the GBI showed up around 10. Didn't take long. They collected the car, and... And then they told me they don't have anybody working on the Wallace case. They said they had never heard of it. I gave them the names and badge numbers of the guys, and they said they must have been fake badges because they didn't have anyone working for them with those names or numbers. They treated me like a fucking idiot. Not like a suspect or even a suspicious dude, just a dumbass. Something wasn't right, at all. But they weren't trying to implicate me or anything. Hell, they seemed to just want to get the hell out of here. So I let them. I spent the next few hours going over my property doing a thorough search for that goddamn rock but I didn't find it, which is good, I think. It's now 4.30 p.m., and I just realized I haven't really been on the case at all today. I'm going out for a drive, think about some shit, maybe go see the Vickery's again. I think maybe I should take a closer look at the kid's stuff. Maybe there's something he left behind that I'm missing. I, uh, I went by the Vickery's. After I called him first and Sarah had no idea who I was. I went by anyhow and it was already a shit show by the time I pulled up. Local cops all over, ambulance near the front door. I walked up and saw some EMTs putting a local cop into the ambulance on a stretcher. Dude's shoulder was bandaged and bleeding. I saw the Vickery's in the back of two separate cruisers. Sarah looked wild-eyed, insane. She had a swollen eye, turning black. Ivan looked catatonic. I tried asking around, but the cops cleared me out of there. I stopped by the liquor store on the way home to grab a decent bottle, and I ran into Principal McCall from Wallace's school, the woman I had talked to a few days earlier. I could see in her eyes that she knew more about what had happened at the Vickery's than I did. She told me they had called the police because they thought someone had been in their house, rearranging their things and hanging strange photos from the walls. When the cops showed up, Sarah attacked him with a knife, screaming that they were all in on it, that it was all some kind of conspiracy. McCall said she had a friend on the force who called her about the whole thing, and that guy said that Sarah Vickery had never mentioned Wallace. McCall looked at me then, and I could see she knew what that meant. She saw the big picture. As much of it as she could without knowing about the rock and the thing with the eye. She looked scared to death and tired. I didn't tell her what Sarah Vickery told me when I called her earlier, that not only did she not know me, she didn't know any Wallace either, and she didn't have a son. I'm about halfway through this bottle, and I got a huge bonfire burning out back, big enough to see from space. I still remember Wallace Vickery, and if that fucking thing wants me, it can come and get some. I won't make it easy for it. It's been four days since the Vickery's were arrested. I hear they're being held at a mental ward somewhere. I haven't heard from the GBI. I've called a couple times, but they never have anybody available to speak to me, and they haven't called me back. Judy McCall, the principal from Wallace's school, hung herself. They say her wife left town after. The whole town's weird. Everybody knows something fucking bonkers went down, but nobody wants to acknowledge it. Hell of a case. <laughs> Didn't solve shit. Suppose I won't. If I keep following this thing, it'll chew me up. 
the thing with the eye hasn't come back around. I don't know what happened to Wallace Vickery. I don't know what happened to those two GBI clowns or whoever they were. I, I'm not sure how to process this thing. I know this. When we're gone, we become just a story, a fiction in the minds of the rest of us still here. I know that no story is really a story until it's over, which is probably why we all die, for completion. But what happens if you get erased, pulled out of the story altogether? Were you ever really here? What's a story without an ending? I don't know about you, but personally, I'm trying to build the biggest fucking weirdest story I can before I go. And the thought of something taking that away from me, taking my story away from the world, is fucking terrifying. But it's out there. Whatever it is. The thing with the eye. I hope it doesn't come back. It's been six months since the case of the kid who wasn't, and I still remember Wallace Vickery. Ivan and Sarah Vickery, and the two GBI guys, I cannot remember. I can't call up their faces or their voices or the memories of any of the times I interacted with them. If it wasn't for my notes and recordings and working on this show, I don't know. It's mostly just a story for me now. This is the first of my weird cases and still to this day probably the weirdest. I call it a case because I was hired, but I didn't really solve anything or get paid. Nor could I give you much more than just a piece of the actual picture here, but... You're getting what I got. I'm not afraid to admit when I don't understand something. This is Weird Out Here, and you've been listening to The Case of the Kid Who Wasn't. Talk to you next time, folks. Until then, stay aware out there. <laughs>